hai nail and hammer they are metals why study metals because just like this nail and hammer we have plenty of them around us what about non metals they are anyways in abundance around us let's look at the air we have oxygen carbon nitrogen and they are all non metals talk about this wooden comb made up of carbon which is a non metal talk about this plastic box what's that again made of carbon which is a non metal so basically we are surrounded by metals and non metals so just can't escape studying about them hello everyone welcome to this video on metals and non metals as always we will focus on the basic concepts for a clear understanding and also on important topics for your exams so in this video we are going to cover metals and non metals physical properties chemical properties occurrence and extraction of metals and refining of metals so are we waiting for someone let's get started what are metals metals are those substances which are electropositive in nature that is they always have a tendency to lose electron let us understand what do we mean by tendency to lose electrons let's take examples of few elements let's talk about sodium so sodium is denoted by na and if we write its electronic configuration it is somewhat like this 281 right so how many valence electrons do we have one now what is generally the tendency of sodium because any element would want to be in its stable state so assuming that sodium would always want to get rid of this last one electron and as as a result this will always have a tendency to lose this one electron and the moment sodium loses one electron it forms na plus that is why we say that sodium is electropositive in nature so whenever an element loses an electron it becomes positively charged why because now it has excess of positively charged ions right because negatively charged electron has moved out so it has more positive charges and therefore it becomes positively charged and this is a behavior which is seen with all the metals let us take one more example let's talk about magnesium so if you write down magnesium's electronic configuration it is 2a2 that is it has two electrons in the outermost shell now it is easier to lose these two electrons rather than accepting six electrons to be in the stable stable state right because we know that stable state means that the outermost shell should either be fully filled right or it has to be or it has to be empty so that then this one the se second last shell becomes the last shell right so basically we want the last shell to be completely filled now in order to do that one option is magnesium can accept six electrons the other option is it can give these two electrons and then becomes 2 8 which will again make the outermost shell fully filled right so giving two electrons is easier than accepting six electrons right so therefore magnesium opts for losing the electron so magnesium becomes mg2 plus by losing two electrons so here also we see that magnesium is electropositive in nature so in general for all metals we see that they have a tendency to lose electrons and hence we say that they are electropositive in nature let's quickly look at things around us which are made of metals any kind of jewelry whether it is necklace bangles earrings crowns they are all made up of metals it could be different metals like it could be made of gold silver but they are all metals talk th think about the hammer or the nail they are all metals the wires the gun refrigerator different parts of the refrigerator is made up of are made up of different metals the wires again the trophies which you get when you win uh, a game cars watches so these are some of the things which we see around us and they are all made up of metals not just these think about your cycle your bike they all have a lot of metals within them 
and this shows that metals are very widely used to make up a lot to make a lot of objects and therefore it is important that we know in detail about them can you think of some common metals around you think 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 and put it in the comment section well some of the common metals that i can think of are gold silver aluminium copper zinc nickel iron and the list is long it's time to know about the physical properties of metals physical properties are those properties which we can see so let's start with metallic luster metals generally have a shining surface and that is what we call as metallic luster think of gold silver copper they all have a beautiful shine on of their own and that's metallic luster metals are generally hard however the hardness varies from one metal to another some metals have the property that they can be beaten into thin sheets this property is called malleability gold and silver are one of the most malleable metals in fact you would have often used aluminium foil for packing your tiffins so this aluminium foil again is obtained from aluminium metal which has been beaten into a thin sheet the ability of a metal to be drawn into a wire is what we call as ductility gold is the most ductile metal the easiest thing that you can think of is the chain that we wear made of gold so basically the metal has been stretched to form a thin wire in fact you would be amazed to know that 1 gram of gold which is like a very very tiny coin not even a coin it's like very light very thin a small 1 gram of gold can be drawn into a wire which is 2 kilometers long so you can imagine how ductile gold is most of the wires that you see in the electric circuits in your house are made up of copper that's because copper is a ductile metal and therefore can be easily drawn into thin wires metals are good conductors of heat and that is why you would see that a lot of utensils are made up of metals metals have high melting and boiling point in fact tungsten is the metal with the highest melting point and therefore it is used in the filament of bulb so that it can withstand high temperatures metals are good conductors of electricity and that is why we see that they are widely used in the electrical circuits yes metals are sonorous that is why you would have seen that the bell that is seen in the temples generally they have a very beautiful sound and they are always made up of metals have you ever seen this kind of uh, sound uh, besides temples at least i have seen that when i was in my school because my school bell was made up of a similar metal metals have high densities and they are very heavy iridium and osmium are the metals with highest densities whereas lithium is the one with lowest density so okay with this it's time to do a quick recap of the physical properties of metals they have metallic luster they have the metallic shine they are hard they are malleable that is they can be uh, done into thin sheets they are ductile that's ductility they can be drawn into thin wires good conductor of heat good conductor of electricity high melting point sonorous that is they produce a, a, a different type of sound when we hit them high density and all these physical properties taken together uh, defines a metal what are non metals non metals are the substances which are electronegative in nature that is they always have a tendency to gain electrons let's try to understand what do we mean by tendency to gain electrons let's take an example of a non metal let's say we talk about nitrogen so nitrogen is denoted by n and atomic number of nitrogen is Seven. So, if we write down the electronic configuration of nitrogen, it is two five. So, how many electrons do we have in the outermost shell? Five. Now, in order to be in the stable state, nitrogen wants that the outermost shell should be completely filled, 
and in order to do that nitrogen has one option that either it accepts three electron or it gives out all the five electrons now taking three electrons is easy or giving out five electrons is easy obviously taking three electrons would be easier so what will nitrogen do it will accept three electrons now when it accepts negative charges what happens to nitrogen overall it becomes negatively charged right because it is taking up three electrons so that means here in this case this nitrogen is taking up three more electrons to become electron negative and this is a property which is seen in all the non-metals let's take another example let's talk about oxygen so oxygen has an atomic number of eight so if we write the electronic configuration it will be two six so six electrons in the outermost shell so oxygen will take two electrons to become stable and it forms o2 minus so oxygen again is electronegative in nature here is an interesting fact about non-metals there are fewer non-metals when compared to metals but at the same time the non-metals are present in more abundance when compared to the metals let's take a look how now when we say fewer non-metals we talk about the number of non-metals that we have when compared to the number of metals that we have so some of the non-metals that we have are hydrogen oxygen carbon iodine sulfur etc now when we talk about the abundance so look at it this way that 50 percent of the earth is ocean and ocean is hydrogen and oxygen that's non-metals so non-metals cover more than 50 percent of the earth let's take a quick look at the non-metals around us we need non-metals for our existence think about the trees how do they make food by photosynthesis and for photosynthesis what do they need they need carbon dioxide right so the trees take in carbon dioxide they also give out oxygen and what is oxygen carbon they are all non-metals think about us we human beings we breathe in so we take in oxygen we breathe out so we give out carbon dioxide so again non-metals right think about the rocket the combustion of rockets so there again we need fuels think about coal petroleum what are they they are all carbon diamond a lot of people are very fond of diamonds and the jewelry made out of diamond but what is diamond carbon carbon is a non-metal again graphite which you often see in the lid of your pencil what's that graphite again is carbon and carbon is a non-metal graphite is not only used in pencil leads it is also used in batteries neon lights non-metal again the helium air balloons you would have seen these balloons right they go up high in the air so what's that helium helium again is a non-metal if you would have noticed in swimming pools uh, the water is regularly cleaned so that people do not get infected because in a swimming pool a lot of people from different places they come and take bath right so what is used for disinfection of the water chlorine and chlorine is a non-metal iodine again is an antiseptic which is a non-metal most of the fertilizers that we often use for agricultural purposes contain non-metals like nitrogen and phosphorus let's quickly take a look at physical properties of non-metals the first one starts with no luster that is they have no shine unlike metals not sonorous so you really do not get a sound like how you get in case of metals not malleable you cannot uh, beat them into thin sheets not ductile you cannot draw them into thin wires poor conductor of heat poor conductor of electricity they are generally soft however there are exceptions to many of these which we will discuss a little later they have low density some of the examples that you could think of is uh, carbon oxygen nitrogen these are some examples of non-metals so you can try to relate these properties with some of these non-metals now we discussed about the physical properties of both metals and non-metals here is a quick look at the exceptions so we say that all metals exist as solids at room temperature except mercury so mercury is the only metal which exists as liquid at room temperature 
metals have high melting points yeah that's one of the properties that we learned but in that also we have exceptions of gallium and cesium so they are metals but they have low melting points we learned that non metals are non lustrous that is they do not have shine the exception to that is iodine so iodine is a non metal which has luster metals are generally hard except alkali metals so we we learned right that metals are generally hard uh, but exceptions are lithium sodium potassium in fact all these alkali metals are so soft that they can be easily cut with a knife non metals are generally soft except diamond in fact the weirdest thing is that non metals are generally soft and out of all the substances known so far the hardest substance is diamond and diamond is nothing but a form of carbon which is a non metal so even the non metals are soft but the exception to that is diamond which is the hardest known substance ever right so that's a, a big exception now here you have seen this word allotrope so a lot of you might be wondering what is allotrope now carbon is a non metal and it exists in many different forms and each form is called allotrope for example diamond is an allotrope of carbon graphite is an allotrope of carbon so they are different <coughs> so there are different forms of carbon now not every element has allotropes so allotropy is a property which is exhibited only by certain elements and carbon is one of them so diamond is also uh, seen to have very high melting and boiling point which is again very similar to metals and therefore an exception to non metal non metals are generally poor conductor of electricity but the exception here is graphite which is a good conductor of electricity so now that we learned so much about the physical properties of metals and non metals time for a question give an example of a metal which is a liquid at room temperature so metals are generally solid at room temperature so which is that exceptional metal which is liquid at room temperature absolutely that's mercury which is also seen in our thermometers that can be easily cut with a knife so again metals are generally hard but we are talking about something that can be cut with a knife that means we are talking about a soft metal so it could be any alkali metal like sodium best conductor of heat so metals are anyways good conductors of heat and electricity and out of that also the best conductor of heat is silver poor conductor of heat now again we are here talking about exception because metals are generally good conductors of heat so some exceptions are mercury whose symbol is hg and lead so these are metals which are poor conductor of heat i hope you found this video useful in the next video we are going to talk about the chemical properties of metals and non metals so stay tuned